Ni hao. Our ability to create and sustain economic growth is the defining challenge of our time. Economic growth, as we know, is a key driver for the development of social spending in education, healthcare, infrastructure, and of course in our ability to attack issues around climate change. Economic growth is also absolutely critical if we are able to create an opportunity for human progress, innovation, and improvements in living standards. Economic growth is also important as a glue and gel to ensure that we have social cohesion and that society does not fracture. Unfortunately, in order for us to increase per capita incomes and to double them within one generation, which is approximately 25 years, we need economic growth in a country to be around 7% per year. No country of import or of size is growing at that 7% rate today. Most critics of the blind pursuit for economic growth using the capitalist model will argue that capitalism has been bad and has actually created more corruption, a petulance in the environment, has actually created the financial crisis and has been an impetus and a catalyst for populism. I am here today to argue that we require economic growth and that growth is critical and powerfully important if we are to address the key economic headwinds that the world faces. These include, in no particular order, technology and the risk of the jobless underclass because of automation. But it also requires that we must focus on making sure that we don't create a splinter net between a Chinese-led and a US-led technology platform. It also means that we have to focus on demographics, and economic growth can help us focus on issues around demographics. According to the United Nations, there will be 11 billion people on the planet by 2100. India is adding 1 million people a month to its population. In order to address demographics, we must continue to drive economic growth. Income inequality, another issue that is of key importance. The reality is we have seen the erosion of social mobility in countries like the United States by as much as 50% over the last several decades. Unfortunately, there's a danger that public policy is reaching for short-term solutions, such as tax and redistribution, as a way to solve income inequality. And then there's natural resource scarcity and the real concerns around climate change. Of course, we now all understand that risk, but we also need to appreciate that today, as many as 1.2 billion people around the world do not have access to cost savings or sustainable energy around the world. There is a temptation, I know, for us to focus on the immediate issues today, such as trade wars and protectionism. However, I implore you that we must act to drive economic growth, and most importantly, we must accept that ideology is the enemy of growth, and we have to be much more open-minded in terms of our ideas and thinking if we are to see economic progress in the years to come. Shay Shay, thank you.